Yo, Jonathan here. This is the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro that just dropped. The ports are back, MagSafe is back. There is a notch, but in my initial testing so far over the past five-ish days, it is disgustingly fast. The beautiful thing there is you can pick up this exact same configuration inside the 14 inch model, which is personally the route I went, but there is an exclusive M1 Max 16 inch high performance mode that I wanna break down ahead of my review. So definitely feel free to subscribe so you don't miss that and drop a comment with any question you might have. So I pre-ordered a 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is a review unit, but not gonna lie, when I learned about this feature, I was kind of like, wait, do I need a 16 inch MacBook Pro? The good news is if you're in that same boat looking at a maxed out 14 inch MacBook Pro, I think we're okay. Ultimately, I'll have to wait to get that in to test it. But from my initial results, I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker. And on top of that, if you're looking at M1 Pro, that doesn't even matter because it's a 16 inch M1 Max exclusive. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro comes with a massive 140 watt USB-C to MagSafe brick whereas the 14 inch model, which again can be configured with the exact same internals, caps out at 96 watts. So why the big difference? So if you hop into system preferences and then battery, you have three different options, low power, automatic, and then high power, which also applies to when you're on wall power as well. So what's happening here is because of the extra thermal headroom in the 16 inch chassis, what it's doing is allow you to push the fans inside here even further for longer periods of time. So for example, take Cinebench, and I'm not the biggest fan of synthetic benchmarks, but this is something that slams every single CPU core 100% every step of the way. And in this case, whether I was on battery or plugged into the wall, both high performance and automatic were about the same exact score. Now getting a little nerdy for a second, as advertised, under full load, this thing is pulling nearly 140 watts. But what's interesting is if we switch it over to low power mode, that then dramatically dips. What's kind of hilarious here though, is even in low power mode, it still outperforms the fastest previous 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro that you could pick up by a pretty significant chunk. And beyond that, this is what the fans on the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro sounds like. compared to the fans really working on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. So all that is super impressive, but to take that one step even further, I'm also testing against the fastest 5K Intel iMac you can still currently buy, and it is getting nearly the same multi-core performance, but what makes things wild is that iMac is drawing nearly twice the power as this M1 Max MacBook Pro. Single core performance outperforms this iMac, GPU performance also outperforms it. So to see what Apple is doing here on a machine, that gets essentially the same results, battery or plugged in, is kind of mind blowing. So as impressive as M1 was in terms of CP performance, there was a lot of doubt and question if Apple could compete in terms of graphics power. Could Apple do this without AMD or a graphics partner? Would they even try? And I think these results kind of speak for themselves, outperforming both the 16 inch MacBook Pro with AMD graphics, as well as the high-end iMac. The other huge thing to consider is it's beyond just CPU and graphics graphics performance. You have things like the neural engine, media encoders, and decoders. If you're a Final Cut user, there's a built-in ProRes acceleration directly on these chips, which is nuts. I got a chance to hang with my guy, Astro Postman. We shot some stuff in 4.2K ProRes RAW, and throwing this into the timeline almost didn't make sense. It felt like I was chopping 720p. The ability to play things back in real time, full quality, just scrubbing, zooming in and out, 
all while doing this in HLG, which is also a huge benefit of this machine with that Pro Display XDR. Yeah, it's ProRes, but it's also ProRes RAW. So having the ability to change ISO, white balance, all while that footage is playing back full quality, are you kidding me? I think my good friend Rene Ritchie kind of said it best. It's almost like Apple sandwiched a Mac Pro and a Pro Display XDR into a mobile computer. So just kind of leave that as food for thought. At this point, if you're watching the video and you're wondering, well, what's the point of the high performance mode? Again, it's not meant to be this instant short sustained burst of power, but rather long term. So if you're doing things like longer music sessions or you're working in 8K or grading consistently, 3D work, things that are going to kind of push your computer for hours at a time, this is where it's going to be most beneficial. For example, right now I would say it's fairly loud outside. It's also raining, so there might be a bit of ambient background noise going on. Like if I pause for a second, then you might start to hear things. Isotope RX-8 and now 9 is one of my favorite audio programs that has some just completely ridiculous black magic sorcery going on inside where it'll actually extract the dialogue from even the environment around itself. This is actually fairly CPU intensive. So even though this is more of a short form video, if you were doing this over a documentary or a movie, something that lasted over an hour, two hours, three hours, that's where that longer performance and sustained performance is really going to matter. If you're doing some optimized work, stuff that's not going to slam the CPU cores to the max every single time, then I really wouldn't worry about it. And even in my case, even knowing that I ordered the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, I feel much better that it's not some magic switch that instantly makes it faster. For those that have followed me, the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro has been my exclusive machine for really the past year. I haven't used a Mac Pro. I haven't used an iMac, even the ones that I've tested in this comparison so far. So I am thrilled to kind of take things up one step further with M1 Max. So stay tuned for that coverage. Again, if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. Thank you guys for watching. This is Jonathan, and I will catch you guys later.